Welcome to my channel. This is Hot Mess and Hot Glue. My name is Lynn. Let's have some fun. I am so excited for today's video. I found some new items at Dollar Tree and I was able to put together some new lanterns on a very great budget. So these bamboo rings, once I saw them, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them, but they come one big one and one small one to a packet. So I did get two packets. This way I could match up two large ones and two smaller ones. Now, I think I actually got a third packet because I have an even like another idea. I just think these are the coolest new item right now at Dollar Tree. Um, I'm going to be using these craft sticks. Now it's the pack that comes with a hundred of them and they're a little bit on the small side. Now I don't typically like to use popsicle sticks like this for um, like the visible crafting aesthetic, I guess. I don't like it because it typically looks like a popsicle stick, but if you go ahead and just put just a tiny dab of hot glue on both the very tip and the very top of the popsicle stick and you attach them to these bamboo uh, rings, it kind of hides that scalloped mark and so it doesn't give it that obvious popsicle stick decor. And so I wanted to give this a try because it was going to take quite a few little sticks in order to accomplish this. So I just wanted to get them completely covered all the way around and then putting one of the small rings on the bottom and one of the small rings on top, as you can see. Now, once they were all attached, I did want to kind of change the color up a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension and some interest. And so taking my favorite wood stain, now this is the one that has very low fumes and it dries extremely quick. It is in special walnut. Now you get a better result if you do not go side to side like I did. If you just go up and down and go with the grain of the wood, it will really make that wood grain pop out more. I then decided to go back through and paint the top and bottom rings with ink by Waverly. And then I thought it might be kind of cool to make a little bit of a lid for this so it could either be a lantern a vase or a container and i'm just using some of this black paracord from the dollar tree and i'm just wrapping this around in a circle hot gluing it as i go to make sure it's nice and secure that was it this was so incredibly easy it took a little bit of time just because of gluing each little part but you put in some netflix pop on your favorite youtube channel and there you go it was extremely relaxing and I thought this was really fun and very versatile. Now I have it here shown with the lid, but I've also took pictures of it with the lid off. I put some plants in there, put some lights in there. I just love how versatile this is. I think this would be great both indoors and outdoors. I would definitely want to bring it indoors during any inclement weather. I don't think that it's strong enough as far as its weight to hold up to any of the crazy winds that we get here in Colorado Springs. So for this next one, we're going to use the two larger rings. And to connect these, I'm going to use some more of that like bamboo reed that I've shown you in a couple videos. I will make sure to have this linked in my description box. And I didn't measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it and I just cut a ton of strips. And so we're just going to do kind of the same thing as we did on the previous project. I'm just going to go ahead and add a dab of hot glue and attach the one end of the um, strip to one of the rings and then the other end to the second one, as you see here, creating a top and bottom. And once the whole middle part is completely filled in, then I only thing I changed that I didn't show on camera was I did add some stain just to the rings and not the sticks in between just to kind of change that look up a little bit. Um, so I kept the bamboo natural and I add a, a little bit of that same stain just to the bamboo rings on the sides. Now this is also so nice. I think it's going to look really good both indoors, outdoors, extremely versatile. Again, I will have to bring this in. It is not very heavy and I do not think it'll survive the wind. <laughs> so this little one though, I think it might be my favorite. It was so quick and easy. Now, Dollar Tree sells these um, wood dowels, and I don't know if it's just me, but my Dollar Tree has not had these in a while, and so I'm running really low. So I decided I was going to try to get as much use of these as I could, and I tried to use 
tried to cut this into three separate sections so that I could use two of those for just my little um, dowel rods that we'll use to give this next little lantern a little bit of height. Now, the base and the top of this one are going to be used, are going to be made of these really cute little circular picture frames. So I disassembled them. You wanna make sure that you're really careful because there are some small nails that are holding it together took out the black backing portion here that you can see that kind of holds you know the picture or whatever it is you were going to put in there we're just going to take all of that apart and then we'll do that to two of these because we need again one for the top and one for the bottom so once that's done just taking a tiny dab of hot glue i'm going to just kind of stagger these dowel rods now, i don't know exactly what their height was i think um I want to say they were like three inches so I was able to get almost two and a half or three kind of um, little separate portions all I'm doing is going across from each other and creating kind of like a circle so that they're just eyeballed evenly spaced I'm not measuring because that's just not something I do I'm so impatient I never measure to attach the bottom I'm just gonna go ahead and put one little dab of hot glue onto one of these little dowel rods and then I'm gonna go ahead and add it separately through the rest just to make sure that they don't um, kind of cinch inward and so that I was getting them in the right place just because they're a little flimsy. So again, using some more of this reed, I'm going to just kind of bend it and make a small handle for this. Now it's extremely flexible as you can see. So I'm able to just kind of add a little line of hot glue, hold it together until it's completely set. Now, once the glue is set, all I'm going to do is just kind of bend that reed a little bit then using my really small detail scissors, I just make a clean snip. Now this is this is the part that I would skip if you were going to recreate this. Um, I decided to take one of the remnants in the bottom of the picture frames and just kind of added that to the bottom of this little lantern. But this, I mean, it's fine. It was I was still able to work with it, but it would have been easier if I'd omitted this stage here. Once I got all of that um, all assembled, then I'm gonna give everything except the handle a coat of ink by Waverly. And if you go in and kind of do the in the inner part of those spindles first, then it's a lot easier and you get a much more even coat. So you can see here, you just kind of stick the paintbrush through and paint the inner portion of those spindles. Then you can go through and paint the outer portions as well. For the kind of secondary detail, I came across these chopping mats from Dollar Tree, of course, and they do come two in a pack. And I decided to, there's like a shiny side and a matte side. I, I have the shiny side up, but I use the matte side. So there is both options for you, just kind of your preference. Once I got a general height idea of how tall this was, I went ahead and just drew the line and I cut it out using just regular old scissors. Now, this is kind of when I realized having that bottom portion was a little bit of a pain because as I'm rolling this up and I'm trying to squeeze it in through the top, if I didn't have that bottom portion on, it wouldn't have been as cumbersome because when I first did this, I just, I, I'm never good with exact measurements. And so it was too tall. You can see it's kind of barely fitting in there. So I have to kind of maneuver it out so that I can trim it down and put it back in. Now, if I had, the bottom was open that would have been a lot easier so once i've got it trimmed and i've got it down to about the right size there's not much overlap but because of the slight overlap i'm going to go ahead and use um glue dots i think i just showed you <laughs> some velcro you don't want to do velcro i apologize for that um the glue dots are in the crafter square section and they're just very thin very clear and they made a really nice addition to this because you just could not see it. So once I put my little flickering tea light in there, I just think that this is so cute. And again, making multiple ones of these would be extremely easy. You can hang them, you can put them in a bathroom. They can be indoor and outdoor, but again, as the other ones, none of these I think are strong enough to withhold any inclement weather. So definitely bring them in. For the last little lantern here, I found these adorable little mirrors and now I really liked how thick the base was. And when I got them home, I was really hoping that I would be able to kind of pop the mirror out so that I could repurpose the mirror. But 
if I were to put any more pressure than what I was putting on it, the mirror was just gonna shatter. So I decided just to keep it there and everything, including the mirror, got two coats of ink by Waverly. And once it was all completely dried, I wanted to kind of just add some more details. So as I'm rummaging through my craft stash, I found this little ring that I had made using a snake. Now I had done something similar in a previous video and Basically, I just cut the head off, I cut the tail off, and then I glued them together. And this I had made for a project probably a year ago, but I just found this, and so I decided to use it. I thought that the texture was really interesting. Um, I also kind of intermingled a little bit of my bear stain along with using the Antique Waverly Wax. If you place that on like a paint and then you wipe it off either with a paper towel or a baby wipe, it will also bring out the wood grain in your wood and it will act as a stain. And when I did that on this other piece of scrap wood that I found in my stash, I really needed to use a darker stain than my bare stain. Once it was all dry, I went ahead and just gave everything a really soft um, sanding just to kind of bring out the edges. And then on the snake portion here, I'm really wanting to make sure that I sand down where I'm gonna add my glue because the glue, any glue, whether it's super glue or hot glue, it's going to adhere better if you're attaching it to a non-stained, non-painted surface. So I just kind of roughed those edges up and I'm just going to be using half of the super glue gel as well as half of the Gorilla Hot Glue. And I just love this combination. I think it's very sturdy and I have full faith that it's going to last. And again, you see, I did not paint the bottom of this piece here because it does adhere better without any paint paint or without any stain. Now I didn't end up using the tiny little round piece. Um, I just decided to grab some um, scrap like jute cord. Now I like to burn the excess little hairs off of it. Now just be really careful. You don't want to do this and if you're using anything flammable. I mean just be safe. Do not catch yourself or your home on fire. Please just make sure you're comfortable doing that. If you are not comfortable then just skip that step. Using one of these adorable little hanging lights from Dollar Tree, I want to remove the little flange on it because my plan is to try to illuminate this lantern here from the inside. And to do that, I want to be able to attach this kind of nubbin piece of the lamp. So I removed the outer rim. And then once I realized I was going to put a vase in between, I realized that these little hanging portions just weren't gonna work. So using my tin snips, which I just recently saw, you can find them at you can found you can find them at Walmart for as low as six dollars. I just think that's such a great deal, and they just snip through this thick plastic like butter. They are so amazing, and they don't ruin your other scissors. So just giving them a little bit of a snip and a bend, these little pieces came off quite easily. So that allowed me to make room for the vase. And then in addition to the vase, I wanted to be able to, you know, turn this little light switch on and off. So that's where these little Velcro fasteners come in handy. So I'm able to do one of the kind of rough portions to the light and the other softer portion so that they connect together onto the base of the lantern. Now I wanna make sure that I'm keeping my on and off switch exposed so that way I can in fact turn it on and off. If you cover it, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult and you kind of lose the fun of having it being able to turn on and off. So make sure you keep that slightly exposed. And again, you just attach the other portion of the Velcro and then glue that down. So all you really have to do is just lift this up and you have the removable portion of the little light so you can flip it on and turn it off again i think this is going to be great outside um but i won't leave it outside because of our crazy weather i really enjoyed this contact cement glue from dollar tree i think it's a really great e6000 alternative kind of a dupe using that in combination with my hot glue because i'm extremely impatient i am able to get that hold that I want immediately along with that long-term cure with the super glue. I put those on and now I'm going to add the vase with the open part of the vase facing upward so that when I place the top portion of the decorative part of this, it's going to go on top and that's where the light is glued in. Now it did seem a little bland. And again, I've been going through my stash, cleaning and straightening up and I found these really cool glass stickers. So I decided to kind of just cut these down so that I could 
maximize the amount of this little jagged pattern that I had here. Then I decided just to add these just on the bottom and they were able to fit completely around the lower circumference of this jar. And I just thought I added a little extra something. Um, when it was all said and done, I did end up still adding some greenery and I thought that that just added a little extra something and I was just in love with how this turned out. I think this is so pretty. I love that I can turn these lights on or off. It could easily make several of them if I wanted to keep them outside or just have them on a little like side table on the back patio. Here is a quick recap of everything that we made today. I absolutely love these. I was so excited to find these new materials at Dollar Tree at my last visit and I could not wait to just get home and have some fun. Please let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. If you plan on re uh, recreating any of these, which one would it be and what would you do different? I am extremely excited to hear from you guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Every time you click on my video, every time you spend some time with me, it 100% just lights up my day. I love talking to you all in the comments. So please, let's get to know each other. Here are a couple more videos. If you are new to my channel, please check some out. If you like it, consider subscribing. But if you could, just give me a big thumbs up. It's free to you and it helps my channel grow so much. It is so greatly appreciated. Until next time, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful time. Bye.